Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, out on another walk. And today, on this rather slightly cold and maybe a bit windy day, I'm in Dragon's Green, which is a, a small village, um, or more of a hamlet really, I think, five miles south of Horsham in West Sussex, uh, a couple of miles from Shipley, and very close to the A24. And I'm just doing a, a very short uh, walk. As you can see, I've got my comedy hat on today try and keep my head warm because I believe that there is a bit of a, a sharp wind so fingers crossed there isn't too much. Um, I've mapped out this simple walk on an OS map and I'm starting here over this little footbridge which is going to take me, I'm not quite sure, but it's a circular walk and we're just going to see what we see like we normally do. So let's crack on. This is uh, one of those occasions where the sun is going to be in and out. There's a bit of a uh, mixed cloud up there. It is cold and you never quite know what to wear, do you? Uh, when you go on a walk, you don't want to be too hot if you're walking for any length of time. I've got my uh, central heating lagging, you know, my water tank lagging coat on, which is very nice. Um, and I've got my hat and already I feel a bit hot, but that's because I've just only come through this little bit of woodland. This way I'm more exposed and there is a cold breeze. I have in my pocket here, one of those other gubbins, fingerless gloves, which I may end up wearing as well. Yeah, well, now that I get out here and into this big field, I can actually feel much colder and more exposed. Just looking at the oak tree here, at the side of the path, a lot of the trees, I mean a lot of the leaves rather, have gone now and we're, we're well past the, uh, the autumn colours at its best. I'm filming mid-November and we're just getting, I suppose, creeping into winter now. There's still a lot of browns, not so many reds and not so many yellows and actually the leaves are a lot crisper. I'm always amazed uh, by the amount of oak trees and in this particular area there seems to be hundreds of oak trees because oak trees was very much a big thing in the southeast particularly in the Sussex area because they were they were very much used for not only house building but for the navy here and we at one time in the middle ages I think we had uh, I'm not sure if we had the most oak trees but we certainly had a a great number of them and many were protected. Queen Elizabeth protected them so that we had sufficient uh, building material for the Navy. It's just lovely to see them. Another crossroads and it can be confusing. If I've got this right, actually this crossroads is the point where I'm going to end up back at and then head back to the car. Actually this way is the start of my main loop. And actually, what a lovely start. This is going through the wood I've, I've actually just walked at the edge of. So let's crack on. I love it. Well, that's incredible. I didn't expect to see this. It is amazing what sometimes you find. You just come across a beautiful pond here, serene surface covered in oak leaves, just floating on the top as they come down. It's very picturesque, very beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah. I'm always amazed how many people actually follow these walks, perhaps online or check out the map. This is the road I'm now crossing 
and this road actually is the road I've parked in just a little bit further down there I've just done a, a sort of across the field round in a circle but I'm going to carry on up this way and hopefully cross it again and then come back this is a slight confusion Dragon Estate, no public bridle where it says there's a stile here. The uh, fence actually you can access. It's quite easy and it clearly goes there as a footpath. And that's the thing, it's a footpath, but it's not a bridle way. Bridle way is for horses or bicycles. Um, so I'm allowed to walk on there, but and th there's a sign just up there that clearly points this way, public footpath, but not a bridle path. And it's important when you do these walks that you know the difference. But if you're on foot, you're perfectly fine. Uh, a slight pause for a moment. Um, warming up now, sun is, is gleaming on my face, it's lovely. It said um, a private bridle way, or it's no public bridle way, and I saw hoof prints and I've been following them on the, on the footpath here. And you can see here, there's some uh, little jumps, mini jumps down. They obviously do a bit of horse training or horse riding around here. And clearly it, it is a private area. So the public, that's why they put the sign up. It makes perfect sense. You don't want all and sundry coming in here if you've got perhaps uh, nervous horses. Anyway, we're gonna carry on and um, go through another forest, another bit of woodland, and then we should come onto another road which we follow a little bit and then that circles us back. Well, I'm on the road and this, um, this just goes, there's not a huge amount of road to walk on and actually it's a very peaceful bit of road. This is a nice little house over there. A couple of houses actually, one round the corner. Lots of um, field maple, I think, all the leaves everywhere. Then I'll get back onto another footpath and we'll start doing the the circle back. Oh, well, I'm back off the road now. The road is uh, back down there. Didn't actually have to go terribly far. I have warmed up quite dramatically now. The temperature has obviously risen, so I'm going to take off my my gloves. I haven't got a rucksack with me, um, so I'm going to have to just shove these in pockets, really. I've just seen some horses uh, clip-clopping along the road. This is obviously horse country. Uh, that was very nice to see them say hello. The, the horses actually are a bit nervous of me uh, standing there with a the camera on the tripod and what have you. Uh, the house I saw earlier also, that was interesting. It was on, you know, you often get junctions and there's a triangular bit of land and it's usually just grass, isn't it? And you've got one direction one way and the other direction the other way. There's a, a finger sign, uh, a finger post that tells you where you are and that sort of thing. Well, the house was actually on that triangular bit of land. Somebody had clearly bought it from the council, presumably, and, and said, I'd like to live there. So it's such a quiet place. Anyway, I'm going to head back. It should be relatively simple. And, uh, and then that'll be my walk. But you never know what you're gonna see. So we'll hold off till I get back. Well, it's been a very nice walk. I've come to the final turning point. This takes me um, back to almost where I started. It's about a quarter of a mile down that way. It's parallel to the road where I parked. So rather than walk down that road, of course, I've come across the countryside and I'm just walking that bit back. And um, just before I crossed the road, I saw a deer. Now, I don't know if it was a roe deer or um, an o deer. I can't remember what it is, <laughs> the other one. Uh, it was the dark grey coloured deer. Um, I tried to film it, it was too far away, didn't have my long lens with me, 
and uh, so I missed that opportunity, which was a shame. It was on its own. I thought it might come down the hill towards me, but alas, it saw me standing there and just thought, no, I'm not going to risk it. And I, I guess I don't really blame it. Um, so come through, the last bit was a bit muddy, muddy because it's a bridle path, but uh, up the, on this last final bit here seems to be a public footpath, so no horses churning up the ground, which is good. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the walk. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the walk. That would be great. Um, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. If you've enjoyed it, become a patron and support what I do. I'm enjoying at the moment exploring the Sussex footpaths and we'll do more of that very soon. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hey. Or is it straw?